Hello and welcome back to another episode of Octo Reacts featuring me, Minion J. Uh, the reason for that, Bori, is because I had a few people in the comments section last week uh, basically tell me they've had enough of the octopus. They don't want to see the octopus. They don't want to see the octopus in any capacity anymore. So as a person of the people, you know, I'm giving you exactly what you want. So <laughs> you won't see the octopus in any capacity, at least for a little while. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Uh, on a slightly worse note, Grumpy Granny's back. So I will put the link to her new video in the description field below. She's doing a lot better. Uh, it's good to see you back on YouTube. So it's great, 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 great to do that. Uh, on a slightly different note, this episode, we're going to be looking at uh, JRPG Life. They're a husband and wife. I think they're a bit of a, they're, they're resellers, but they're not really born to the reseller capacity, right? So what the reason why I brought up this video for is that I watched a couple of their videos. They're fantastic. It's not a, <laughs> a stab at them or anything along the lines of that. I just want to bring attention to the fact that YouTube recommended this video to me about three or four days ago and what you will find and what i will tell you at the end of the video um something that's quite concerning and that's the reason why i brought this video up for is because like i said wait to the end and i'll tell you exactly why this video is um being you know obviously brought up for this week's octo reacts for a little bit of background knowledge for those that don't know jrpg stands for japanese role-playing game if you're not really in the gaming space and you've heard of final fantasy if you've heard of dragon quest you've heard of you know, all those different Kingdom Hearts, and they, all those fall under the umbrella of JRPG. Uh, so basically, they're just, like I said, a husband and wife team that, you know, go around thrifting and or go to garage sales and buy, you know, buy stuff to resell to fund their, their game collection. Um, I suppose from my perspective, if I was to create a YouTube channel for those people that, you know, want to take advice for someone that knows nothing about what YouTube does, um, you know, it's probably, we're, we're disappearing. So basically, it's probably one of the better ways to you know create a, a following or a, you know a bit of a channel viewership you know do do reselling to you know buy games or buy things that go towards a collection for these ones i actually picked up the other day um from a, a local game shop you know 10 bucks each so they're going into the sega master system collection that i'm doing as well uh so if you haven't already please like comment subscribe i will ask you comments through uh, through the video just to get your perspective and all those different things but keep an eye on little things i have snipped this video already um it gives me a bit of an idea of what it is so uh, i have watched through this i have put my own little comps to give you a bit of an idea of what's going on behind the scenes but without further ado let's go Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. we're back Seven so minutes. we've got about 100 pops what do you think what would you do for all just the pops give me, give me an offer because i'm not a so out of that whole collection there they paid 600 dollars i think it was they paid 400 for what you see now they add some extra collection in there as well so one of those pops in there is worth over 1500 dollars us so that's pretty much the premises of this episode i'm dan i'm elisa and this is our jrpg life we are a married couple that loves playing, collecting, and hunting for video games together. We're on a quest to find all the best JRPGs to add to our collection for free. For free! And we do it through yard sales, local deals, trades, and much more. I think, well there you go, Final Fantasy there, but I think my first Japanese RPG was probably Final Fantasy VII on the PlayStation 1. Um, and I've played a plethora since then. It's one of my favorite categories, that and horror, like yeah, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, all those different things. So join us on our journey to attaining gaming grills. Because you never know what we'll find. Heck. So it's just it's got some stuff on the table that's probably like the, the good stuff. These are probably the more expensive ones. Sailor Moon. Yeah, those are the, she said the fifty dollar ones. Imagine you're going to a garage sale or a, or a yard sale then. <laughs> Having things advertised at fifty dollars for a pop. There are a lot of chases there, right? So um your Sailor Moon ones probably do still hold a little bit of value, but everything else, yeah, I wouldn't be paying fifty dollars for that. That one's like a buck, okay. buck twenty on it. Really? Jeez. But it's, it's got a crease in it. You know, you know yeah. they are with those. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm back. And yeah, so what I've circled there, <laughs> it's pretty dodgy uh, pre-production, post-production. Um, they're like ticky mugs. They they came out a couple of years ago, and they'll probably in their height just before or just after COVID, I can't remember. Um, so basically they're worthless. So if you do see them, leave them there. They are absolute garbage. Um, Some mine for yeah. these yes. pops. For, yeah. Okay, so the ones in the front were $5 uh, each. Yeah. Ten, uh, ten. And then the ones that you guys are standing the closest by were $10 each. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
How much did you say that Angela was? These are all 50. These are all 50. 50? Okay. All of these. Let's pull our car up. Uh, so his wife would be like my daughter. She's obsessed with Sailor Moon and probably obsessed with her shirt as well. She's actually got a Demon Slayer shirt on. Kids love Demon Slayer. <laughs> She's distracted. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got about 100 pops. Mexican standoff. <laughs> we'll see how we go. What do you think? What would you do for... All Just the pops. give me give me an offer because I'm not a well, I'm not a add I'm not a 15, haggler. If you add another fifteen to it, and then whatever the break is, you can give me my portion of it. I don't. Do you want any of these pops? Um, sure. Yeah, Harley Quinn. Yeah. Um, Suicide Squad. Yeah. As a rule of thumb, if it's DC or Marvel uh, and it's not exclusive, like the New York Comic Con, actually at the con, opposed to you know just shared exclusives. If it's not SDCC, which is the San Diego Comic Con uh, at the con, um, they're generally worthless. So <laughs> stay away from uh, you, you big heavy hitters like your DC Marvel. Most of Dragon Ball said, most of what Dragon Ball Super and all those different things. Totally. Would you take four hundred? Sure. I'm not even gonna negotiate. You can, yeah. yeah. Oops. Oops. Um, like kick it. So she's basically negotiated that. Well, he's negotiated the um, the hundred pops at four dollars a piece. Then they're going through the chase ones now, just to cherry pick which ones that they want. And Angela. So instead of one fifty, do you want to do like seventy? Yeah. Can I add Buffy too. <laughs> what would you do with Buffy? With Buffy. Let's do. Oh, and Siri. Want. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you found Siri. Oh, there's two series. series. There are two <laughs> series, yeah. Okay. What would you do for this text? Okay, so... <laughs> oh. So instead of 250, you want to just do like 160? So these guys later in the video, they actually say they're not pop collectors. Uh, <laughs> I have watched this video before, and they give me conniptions of actually how they handle the pops. You might have caught the guy at the start saying that the, 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 the box has got a crease in it. Don't deal with those ones. Pops primarily a collector's piece right so realistically you need to treat them as such and i've mentioned this numerous times before in the podcast i've mentioned it numerous times in these videos is that realistically you really need to be very careful with these as soon as they get the slightest bit of damage their their value plummets um but it, and it plummets <laughs> i can't stipulate that enough how's that so so and then, and then we had what's, four what's 400? so where are we at? 600 sure deal so this is what i was talking about earlier um so the pop on the right's so just sitting there by itself obviously if they go around the corner there's a good chance it's going to smash into it i can't work out which pop it is uh it looks like it's one of the, the larger 10 inch ones i'm not too sure but realistically your chase ones are the ones that are considerably worth money that generally speaking i think the chase ratio is supposed to be one in six so for every sealed case of six if that character has a chase theoretically they should have all those different things uh funko is becoming very cold in the collector space you know like i was saying it before is that you need to actually be mindful especially if you're going into these spaces to sell these products is that you need to either make them a very quick flip like um got to sell them all i've done a reaction video to one of his previously so he picked up a heisenberg from cash converters which is a pawn shopper in, in australia for 200 dollars he's flipped it about 600 bucks i have no problem with that because obviously he's moving it out <clears throat> but what you need to be very mindful of is you can't sit on this product um, i won't ruin what they did to this it was very clever and very smart from that perspective however you need to be mindful of that where they paid four dollars a pop for this i probably wouldn't be paying a dollar a pop at the moment <laughs> all right so we just got finished does anyone else think that looks like Brad from Two Aussie Thrifters? Like, it must be the hat. I'm not too sure what it is. Uh, going through all these pops, there are about 120 of them. We have all these Sailor Moon pops for Elisa, Sailor V, Sailor Venus, and Artemis, Tuxedo Mask, Sailor Mercury, Sailor Mars, and Sailor Jupiter. So, <laughs> with. That's always the way that the song goes as well. <laughs> I'm sure my age now. This, and then all of these bins combined. Uh, I am Captain Planet. Um, so we paid 
we paid 400 plus um, another about 150. Or, yeah, so for, we paid, the, for the pops. Yeah, 550 for the pops. So what he did, I didn't show it because I cut it out. I sliced the video up. That's a Wii U console box up the top. That was pretty cool. Uh, so basically, he bought a, a Far Cry collector's edition for 50 bucks. So where he might have heard $600 before, it was 550 for the pops, $50 for the other thing that they bought. Um, this is worth $2,700. That's crazy. And? And we found this. Check this out. So I'm going to give away the punchline now. Um, what I told about the start of the, the start of the show, this video is two years old, right? So this is why I actually chose this video for today's you know reaction video, is that YouTube actually recommended it to me, right? If you're a new reseller, you're seeing that pops are going for twenty seven hundred dollars. I would conservatively say that they're probably about twelve to fifteen hundred dollars now that they've dropped. There's nothing wrong with that, and their their strategy, what they do with these pops, I'll, I'll discuss a little bit later when we get to that, is quite smart. But probably not achievable in this, you know, this <laughs> current climate. Um, but you need to be mindful of it's that YouTube is actually punching new videos that potentially two, three years old. So when you hear bolos, when you hear all these different things in videos, you need to do your own research because they not might not be relevant anymore. So then we found this, which is. Uh... So this is the pop piece. It's worth fifteen hundred dollars. Just watch how he handles it and have a look at the back of the pop, which realistically their value is being plummeted by the virtue of the, <laughs> the damage that's on the pop. Uh, Greedo, and it said that there could be a really rare variant of this. Turns out the blue border one is the vault edition. So you look on the right up there, it's actually come away from the box that's separated. When he talks about the vault edition, it's actually what Funko classes their retired pops as. So they're actually called vaulted. Uh, if you do see Vaulted as a keyword in a Funko pop listing on eBay. It means the Funko doesn't make it anymore. But as everything else, the Funko will release re-release these things. So if you are finding very high dollar value pops, get rid of them. <laughs> sell them, sell them under market, make a hefty uh, profit margin if you have to, and get rid of them because it doesn't take much for to Funko to change their mind and re-release. And they have been doing that the last 12 months. Funko in itself is becoming a very I wouldn't say a toxic company. It's becoming very commercialized in the sense that it's moving away from its roots. It's moving away from its consumer base. You know, the, the creator Funko, he's normally referred to as Fun Maker Mike. Um, he was the CEO before he sold it to, and they basically carried on. But he was existing in that company in some capacity and doing a lot of the, the social PR and all these different things. To, you know, people love this guy, right? So he announced last week that he's actually leaving Funko. So that's another you know, I suppose, knife in the back from a Funko's perspective. So be very mindful if, that if people are trying to sell you bulk lots of Funko, um, do your research, make sure what's in there, make sure the box conditions are right, check sold listings, don't check listed listings, um, and go from there. And super rare, this one just recently sold for $1,500. So keep in mind, this is $1,500 US, right? So in Australian conversion, that's probably just say a thousands, uh, we'll, we'll go $2,600. I, I don't know how close I am, but we'll just say $2,600. So this is a, to me, it looks like it's a, a I don't know if it's, a, they refer to it as a sold listing, but I'm not too sure if that's a sold listing. <laughs> I can't find it. This video is two years old, I can't think. Are you kidding me? $1,500. Not anymore, considering the, the, the box condition. And this is what I keep going on about. You need to be very mindful. This can, this pop, as soon as I identify that, it needed to go in a hard stack um, and be put away <laughs> under lock and key. So with that kind of damage, you're probably looking maybe $1,100 or $1,000 at market for that. Not pops collectors. Anybody got it? So these are the ones that are actually... Yeah, through in when I was pre-editing the video. I'm not too sure why they didn't come up perfectly. But so on the 5th of July and the 17th of July, they sold for $1,000 Australian and $1,500 Australian, right? So these ones are mint uh, in the sense that, you know, probably, you know, perfect as boxes you can get. So that top one on the 8th of July, oh, sorry, the 5th of July is sold for, uh, so about $600 American. So what we're looking at is $1,500 to $600 American. And this one here is probably about around that $800 American that sold probably about a month ago as well. So like I was saying, is this watching videos from two months, uh, sorry, two years ago uh, with the current pricing, this is how much Funko Pops have dropped in that two-year period, right? Um, and I dare say this is probably going to bottom out about that 
500 $600 mark. Oop, let's press play. The Earthbound out there in box, they want to do a trade. So Earthbound, um, I think it's called Mother, Mother 2 in Japan. I don't think we ever received it here in Australia, but it's basically a Japanese RPG game that was on the Super Nintendo or the SNES, uh, which is always one of the SNES when I was a kid. My, <laughs> my parents never got me right. Look, here I am bleeding again. Uh, so basically, long story short, we'll look at the different comp cost comparisons, right? So I've got one that's either listed or sold. I can't remember. They, they don't come up very often. Um, it will pop up in a minute. So they're basically trying to swap their Greedo box for this game. Keep in mind this video is two years old. So when this video you know, for today's market prices, right? So that, that pops potentially worth $600 American um, to $800 American and the game that they're wanting to trade for is- Comment down below, cause we're gonna keep this one and sell it, but the rest of them, we've got a buddy who runs a comic book shop, which we'll take- So this is a current listing uh, for Earthbound. So $2,200. So $1,700 American, $1,600 American. So that goes a comparison, right? So this is what I'm talking about is that this is a current listing. So, you know, it looks like vintage games are going up and Funko Pops the plummeting. <laughs> so keep in, keep in mind that markets change a lot. You with? Yeah, and we're going to sell it to him for more, way more than we paid, but he's going to sell them for way more than what he'll pay us for. So uh, we're going to go make a deal with him and get these out of our living room. <laughs> but we'll do that again anytime. That's awesome. Yeah. So what he was saying is he's basically going to sell the, the, the crap um, as essentially to his friend that work, runs, a, a, I suppose, a comic book store or where he is, which is a fantastic idea, right? Would I suggest that now, unless you're paying 20 cents, 30 cents a pop, probably not, because that's probably you're only going to get a $2 for a pop, especially if you got a you know, cash converters or a porn store, a porn shop. Uh, it's going to be virtually worthless. First for us, by the way, absolute first time buying pops like this, and I'm excited. I'm not excited the way you handled them. <laughs> it's, you know, you can tell with these different things. And I suppose the luck of these things for these people, right, is that, you know, if they got like, yeah, Super Nintendo uh, boxes are made of cardboard, you know, someone grabs it up and starts pushing it, you, you know, crunching it and crashing it, all these different things, they probably have conniptions. I just want to see what about a hundred pops looks like in a hatchback. It's nothing. Piece of <laughs> So I don't know what his relationships were like with his friend. However, if he went to a just a normal comic store and rocked up with a box like that, they're automatically going to take money off the price because it's condition. For a hatchback. Plenty of room for more. I guess we better go, go buy more pops. <laughs> so by the way, this was our single biggest yard sale purchase ever. Yeah. And uh, the only reason we did it is because we we have a buddy who owns a shop who we know will buy it from us and we'll make some money off of immediately. We don't have to. So that's fantastic advice, right? So basically this guy's already got an exit strategy for his his pops. <laughs> so when he goes to buy something, you know, you're obviously having a buyer for that product. You might go to a, a garage sale and find heaps of jeans or heaps of clothes, vintage t-shirts, all these different things. And you may know someone that buys them, you know, so more luck to you. And there's a fantastic strategy, but probably not relevant in the pop space these days. Sit on this product and he has a storefront. <laughs> so he doesn't even have to sit on it very long either. He'll sell like crazy. Yeah. Yep, and it's, in my opinion, the best comic book shop and clerical shop in town. Let's my opinion, too. Yeah. yeah, You're not biased at all. No, not biased at all. We just, we know we're the best. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So make sure you check them out if you haven't yet. So that was a great deal. We got, basically, we spent $400 on Pops mm -hmm. plus another 150 The 150 was for most of this stuff, right? Yeah. This is what we ended up keeping. Yeah, this is personal collection items. So it looks like he's got his Greedo, I think it's Greedo, uh, down the bottom here in a soft protector, which is a really thin plastic protector. Uh, the hard stacks, which are really the hard plastic versions, probably set you back about $10 US each or $10 Australian for us. Um, definitely anything, personally, anything that's around that $100 Australian mark, I'll put in a hard stack before I send them out. Uh, Funko Pops, I used to import a lot from the States. Um, they're primarily a big part of my business. However, since the market plummeted, yeah, you need to get rid of them. Um, if you're a bit curious, yeah, by all means, put it in the comment section below. What, what, if you were collecting Funko Pops, what line would you collect? Um, I'm more of a, more of a Krampus <laughs> person myself, so I normally collect him. Um, even though I said I would. And let me know who, if you know who Krampus is. If we weren't going to collect Pops, I just, I couldn't resist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is all the Sailor Moon items except for two of them. Yeah, there's, so there's a Sailor Moon Luna. 
And there's two variants of her. She There's one with a, a sticker and one with not a sticker. So the sticker, there's, you know, there's a, <laughs> a term affectionately known in the, I suppose, the Funko Pop or the collector market called sticker hose. So if you look at that Sailor V, which is the one with the glasses on the top right near the wife, uh, she's got a little sticker on it. It's a shared exclusive from a, uh, a Comic-Con. I think it's New York Comic-Con. Um, so basically that would be worth more than a pop or that identical pop without that sticker. And depending on what the sticker is, the more value attributed to that pop. I would love to pick up one of them. I don't need both. <laughs> yeah, so we'll find those eventually. You know, maybe we'll go to a con someday and pick them up. Uh, Buffy, uh, this was Angela from Gargoyles, Siri from The Witcher, from The Witcher, Heartless from Kingdom Hearts. Got Kingdom Hearts is another Japanese RPG, Disney. We got a Spider Gwen, and then Horizon Zero Dawn, The Watcher. There were a few Horizon Zero Dawn figures, but really, we like the the mech dinosaurs. Yeah, um, Ooh, we, have, the we have the Thunder Jaw. Yeah, we have the Thunder Ma. And, and the Thunder um, Jaw, yeah. And then, of course, we kept this one. Yeah, so this one. So I can actually work it out. I, I think it's a, a soft protector. Uh, <laughs> if it's worth that much, definitely just spend the extra $10 and put it in the, 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 the best hard case you can get. <laughs> and we're going to try to either do a trade or maybe... We might try to sell it on eBay. Comment below, how would you sell something like this and feel pretty comfortable about it? We're a little scared to sell something. So eBay... like. Oh. Personally, I've sold a few pops that are worth a thousand dollars Australian on eBay, right? So a lot of the NFT ones, the digital ones, the Scooby Doo ones, uh, from that perspective. So I've had no issues selling those on eBay. Uh, I'll make sure I insure it, make sure I take photos of every nth degree of that pop. Um, I would suggest that they probably wouldn't sell that pop on eBay <laughs> just by virtue of the damage um, and their inexperience from that perspective, or inexperience from two years ago from actually selling pops. So be quite curious to see if if you haven't you know got any favorite pop lines and all those different things. Put in the comment section below what's your biggest eBay sale. Um, mine's probably around about that thousand to twelve hundred dollar mark personally. That from my memory, uh, but be curious to see how many people out there have sold more or less or you know all those different things. Something inexpensive online, but I know there's some protections in place. But if you have any experience with that, please share. Uh, this is a first for us. Yeah, we might try to sell it locally. We might try to sell it online, but, you know, we definitely want to be prepared. Realistically, and this is a bit of a, a public service announcement, is that if you're looking at selling this, if they went to sell this locally um, because it's such a high value item, I'd strongly suggest you use a police station or a public area um, just for your own safety. You know, realistically, I'm not saying that <laughs> something untowards would happen. However, you know, I have heard rumors of people being uh, robbed um, and all these different things and probably worse uh, from public meetups. So definitely in a police station or, you know, in a public place at a very minimum. Protected as a seller. And of course the buyer needs to be protected as yeah. well. So basically everything we did, uh, we bought on the blanket was about $400, right? We're not cutting this because we spent 150 on about all this. Because this is, this is personal. This is personal. So we spent $400, immediately traded almost all of that into my buddy Joe and his store for 900 bucks. Yeah. So that's fantastic. So they basically got $500 profit, um, even that. So just say $300 because they spent $600 um, all up. So in the space of probably two days, they made $300. Plus they got the Greedo downstairs that goes for about $1,000 in its current, well, in its then current state uh, and the Sailor Moons and all those different ones they want to collect for themselves. Basically, we have a consistent deal with him. We know what to expect when we walk in. He knows what to expect when we when we bring stuff in. And I think we came to good uh, to a good deal going forward and we know what we need to buy at to give it to him to make money. Yeah, the, the great thing was is that we made that large purchase and within the same day, we were able to get rid of like 90% of it and make profit. Exactly, and it's not in our house anymore. Uh, the only other thing, so that's 400 bucks turned into 900 immediately. Yeah. And then kept the stuff for free. And we got the Far Cry, the Father Edition, right? Yeah. I, I'm <laughs> very, very guilty with the, the nostalgia factor, which yeah. is which is obviously why Pops are so successful. So I agreed 100% with what they said up to that point, right? So realistically, they've got no idea when it comes to Pops. Well, two years ago, they didn't. Uh, the reason why Pops are collectible per se is for that they retain their value. Um, 
and you'll probably go to the to stores now, you'll see them on clearance, you'll see them overflowing because they can't move that stock because the prices have plummeted. People aren't investing in them anymore. They're not moving them on. And they're, not, and they're being mass produced. So where she's saying is that they're collected from primarily a nostalgia value. Probably initially they were. Um, then once they started attracting a little bit of money, a little bit of investment dollars from that perspective, they did shoot off. But I dare say, and I have said numerous times, <laughs> a lot of people are arguing with me in the comments, and you by all means do it again, is that I reckon Funko Pops are going to be the next Beanie Babies. It's their business, the yeah. nostalgia. Yeah. So thank you again for watching. And remember... Their business is to make money, not nostalgia. The couple that finds a new thing to collect and sell together stays, stays together. together. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, no. Yeah, so that was a good video. Like I said, that was fantastic. They, they identified a sourcing opportunity. They took it. Then they basically went home and priced it, um, you know, and took Greedo out and then obviously flogged it off to their friend that has a comic book store. So realistically, that's what you want to be doing. If you go to yard sales, garage sales and all these different things, find a mass lot, reach out to your contacts and see if there's anyone that will actually take it on mass. So you can, you know, turn it into, you know, three or $400 profit. Uh, take out what you want and go from that perspective as well. But that was a really good video. I'll put their, their channel in the description below. Like I was saying is that if you are looking at starting YouTube, I think personally, from my experience, this is a fantastic, um, you know, a little bit of a niche. You know, obviously you, you, you're catering towards the reselling market, you're catering towards the picking market, and you're also collecting, yeah, they've got the collectors, game collectors and all those different things. So fantastic. I will put their channel in the description below. Have a look at it, check them out. Um, they're pretty, they've got about 75,000 follow uh, subscribers so they're doing pretty well for themselves but um yeah but <laughs> that's us for another week but anyway we'll we'll catch you next time bye